Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, let's keep praising him in this place. Yes, Father, we belong to you, Father. Come on, y'all, let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Father, this is the day that you have made. And we are rejoicing and we are exceedingly glad in it for you are good. Thank you, Father, that we belong to you. Because of Jesus, we belong to you. That's not nothing to sneeze at. We belong to you. We're your children. So, Father, today we're so excited that we're alive. You woke us this morning. You breathed life in us this morning. You allowed us to live another day, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for unity in this nation. There's division that's trying to take over our culture, but I rebuke the spirit of division in the name of Jesus. Father, this world belongs to you, and you've given us to us. So we're going to allow you to use us in this season. Father, we thank you for our wonderful pastors, Dr. Dollar and Pastor Taffy. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and all that concerns them. Thank you for the wonderful gifts that you've given us. Father, I thank you for everyone that's joined here together, both online and in person. I speak the blessing over their lives. Father, today I'm letting you know I'm yours. I give myself to you. Use me how you see fit to use me. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords, Father. Help me to speak this word with clarity and precision so it can make a mark in your people's lives that will never be erased. And we're in expectation, Father, for you to do what you do best. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. All those that agree, say with me, amen. Come on, y'all, let's give them some praise again. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. So I want to welcome everyone to Wednesday morning Bible study. Welcome to all of you that have joined us online. Welcome to Wednesday morning Bible study. As y'all see, I'm excited. I'm happy. You know, the Holy Spirit keeps you happy. Amen? Amen. So before I get started, of course, I want to give honor to our wonderful pastors, Dr. Dollar and Pastor Tabby. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up for them. As I was in the back, I was thinking about it. I said, when I was coming up in the streets, uh, one, of th one of the things we didn't have was good examples. And our pastors have been great examples to follow, haven't they? Amen. And I just want to say to them, like, you, you, the example that you guys have been, been to us has changed my life significantly. So I am so grateful to have our pastors. Ain't y'all grateful to have our pastors? Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the title to my message, it's kind of long, but I know it's from God. The title of today's message is Cultivating a Pure Heart That's Established in Grace and Rooted in Love. Let me repeat it to you one more time. Cultivating a pure heart that's established in grace and rooted in love. Now I can hear some people saying, y'all just stuck on this grace thing. Yes, we are. You know why? Because Paul said it's the only gospel. And not only that, it's changing our lives. Ever since the moment I heard about grace and I learned about it, my life has been impacted in a way that I can't even explain today. So absolutely, we're going to continue to talk about grace until Jesus comes back. Amen? Amen? Now you may be asking, Brother Jones, why is this important? Well, when our hearts are established in grace, we are liberated from the burden of striving for perfection and instead embracing the journey of growth and transformation. In a world filled with chaos, uncertainty, and trials, grace stands as an anchor for our souls, offering peace, strength, understanding, and hope. So the first scripture we're going to go to today is Proverbs 23, 26 in the Passion. I'm going to let you guys know, this is Bible study, right? 
Everything I'm teaching, I got to show it to you in a word. I'm not going to get up here and just talk about something that I didn't study. And I'm not, you know, that's how we do as pastors. We got to show you in the word. Amen? Amen. So Proverbs 23, 26 in the Passion. My son, give me your heart and embrace fully what I'm about to tell you. So y'all ready? Are we going, let's give our hearts to God today, amen? amen. And we're going to fully embrace what he's about to tell us today, amen? amen? So today, Lord, we give you our hearts and we receive what it is that you have to say to us today. So the foundation scripture for this teaching, go with me to Matthew 5, 8 in the AMPC. Matthew 5, 8 in the AMPC. Blessed, happy, inviolably fortunate, and spiritually prosperous, possessing the happiness produced by the experience of God's favor, check this out, underline this, especially conditioned by the revelation of His grace, regardless of their outward conditions, underline this, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, a couple of things we're going to take a look at at this scripture is I want you guys to pay attention to a few parts of this scripture. We're going to pay attention to the revelation of God's grace. We're going to pay attention to the outward conditions. And we're going to pay attention to the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Let's start with the revelation of grace. This is no condemning message. This is not to condemn anyone. But I got to be honest. There are too many believers under this teaching of grace, but have yet to get a revelation of grace. As much work, time, and dedication that our pastors put into this gospel of grace, it is, we should not, we should understand this. We should have revelation of this thing by now, amen? And I think that does them a disservice if we walk around still under the law and they've been teaching this gospel of grace for years, and it's yet to hit us, not just us, but, you know, people in the world. We're going to learn it's very important to get a revelation of God's grace. I'm telling you, for you will see God. Now, how do I know that, it, that it's not being impacted? Well, it, well one thing's for, for sure, grace guarantees to produce fruit. Remember my last teaching, grace is the foundation for fruit? The Bible says that you will be able to tell a tree by the fruit that it bears. And if we are operating in this grace, we should be operating in the fruit that it produces. The fruit should be evident, amen? amen. So again, this is not a, a, a message that's going to condemn you. It's to bring awareness that it's time for us to get established in this gospel of grace because once we're established, we can preach it to the world and then Jesus can come back. Amen? Amen? So, one thing I wanted to pay attention to also in the scripture where it says, regardless of outward conditions. When you're under grace, outward conditions shouldn't rule us. Why? Because when a person has a revelation of God's grace, bad outward conditions doesn't move that person because they know that whatever they're dealing with, grace is sufficient for everything. Now, they're human. There will be certain situations that'll move them because we're human. But when you're, in, when you're established in this grace message, you know that grace is sufficient for everything that we go through. The more you understand grace, the more you trust grace when outward conditions come into our lives. Amen? Now, look at this. Go back to the top of that scripture. Look at the top of Matthew 8. When you understand, when you have a revelation of grace, you know that everything at the top is a finished work. Y'all agree? When, you're, when you have a revelation of grace, you know you're blessed. You know you're happy. You know you're fortunate. You know you're spiritually prosperous. You know you possess happiness. All of that favor, it's finished. When you see grace, you see God. You see his character. When Jesus operated, you saw his character. It was a character of grace. Everything that he operated in, it showed he was gracious. 
So when you understand grace, it's like once you understand grace, God puts these lifetime grace glasses on your eyes, and you can't remove them. And I love them because I see everything from grace now. And it helps you to see things differently. That it, that's why it's empowered you to change. Because you see everything from the eyes of and the lens of grace. When you see everything from the lens of grace, it will impact your lives. It will impact your family. It will impact your job. It will impact every area of your life. Amen? I asked God, I said, why this wonderful revelation of grace is not penetrating in a lot of people's lives? Now, I, when I was studying this, this was a week ago, pastor said this this Sunday, the believers are not believing. But when they do, they're not being established in that belief long enough. We're going to learn about that in this teaching. The first thing I want to start with this teaching is we're going to talk about the pure heart. Okay? We'll come back to that. Number one, do we have a pure heart once born again? Number two, what blocks a person from operating in a pure heart? So, we've already given God our hearts, right? And we've agreed to embrace what he's about to say, amen? Go with me to Psalms 51.6 in the TPT. Psalms 51.6 in the TPT. And it reads, I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. So come into the hidden places of my heart and teach me wisdom. Father, I pray right now that you set your truth deep inside our spirits. Come inside the hidden places of our hearts and teach us wisdom today, amen? Next scripture, go to uh, Proverbs 16.2 in the NLT. Proverbs 16.2 in the NLT. Let me slow down, but I'm just excited about this, amen? amen? All right, check this out. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Y'all know where I'm going. Let me read that again. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why did you show me this? He said, do you want to know why, what blocks a person from operating in a pure heart? I said, yes, Lord. He said, bad and carnal motives that's hidden in our souls. Let me repeat that again. What blocks a person this is from the Spirit of God. I asked him, what blocks a person from operating in a pure heart? Bad and carnal motives that are hidden in our souls. Now, I'll go ahead and give, I'll tell you a little bit now. We have pure hearts, but there, we have a soul as well that we have to constantly transform, that we have to constantly grow in. But we're going to learn about that today, how to walk in pure motives, amen? Now, this goes back to what pastor has been teaching. What is our why? Why do we have a relationship with God? Is it for the benefits? Why do we do what we do? Why do we go to church? Why do we give? Why do we serve? Um, I remember when I first joined this church, um, I, re I heard from the Spirit of God, and he said, I want you to start serving. And I remember I graduated, and I remember uh, the VKs grabbed me quick. It was like I just knew it in my spirit that I was here to be a VK. So I knew my heart was right. You know, I wanted to serve, but I had some hidden motives. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Um, and one of those hidden motives was I wanted to be seen. When we, when we serve, when we come to the church in the mornings, uh, we pray in, and then they kind of, you know, select tasks, positions, or where the VK is going to serve. You know, they'll tell you, you're going to serve here in this post. You're going to serve in this post. So with me wanting to be seen, I always wanted to serve in the dome. And it was funny because I never got to serve in the dome much. <laughs> they would always 
put me in a children's ministry, put me on Dollar Drive. But I'm saying that to say God knew my motives wasn't right. I served as a VK for five and a half years. Now, what was happening was God was developing my motives. He was developing my why. He knew I wasn't ready to be seen yet. He knew. See, that's why God searches our motives. He knew I wanted to be seen. So it took that long for him to develop my why and to develop my motives. And the funny thing about it was when he was done with it, I couldn't care less about being seen. And then that's when he put me in ministry. <laughs> he was like, now you're ready. I'm like, okay. But you see how this works? You know, you got to be honest with yourself. Do a self-examination and say, Lord, search me. Do I have any hidden motives? We're going to learn about that today. We all have had or may have some type of hidden motives. Amen? I mean, I remember when, um, you know, I was trying to get my son to serve, and they had called him to do something online one time, and he didn't even show up. And I heard the Spirit of God say, don't force him. Let him develop his why. His motives aren't right yet. I mean, because here's the thing, you know, when you have the right motive, you're gonna, it's going to be longevity, loyalty. But when you have a bad motive, you know, when you don't get what you want, it's not going to be any longevity in it, amen? So um, go with me to Psalms 26.2 in the NLT. Psalms 26.2 in the NLT. I am so excited about this. All right, it reads... Lord, put me on trial. Put me on trial, Lord. Cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. Now, don't be afraid, y'all. <laughs> I can just hear some of y'all. I know you're here cross-examine. This is not court. We are not in court. God is not judging you, amen? He's already judged that. He's already judged Jesus for anything. But... This is more of an awareness when you ask God to test your motives. He loves you, but he loves you that much to help you be aware of some hidden motives that could be hiding in the closet. Amen? All right. Next scripture, Proverbs 21, 8 in the message. Proverbs 21, 8 in the message. Check this out, y'all. Mixed motives twists life into tangles. Pure motives take you straight down the road. Let me read that one more time. Mixed motives twist life into tangles. Pure motives take you straight down the road. And when I'm thinking about mixed motives, I'm like, what does that mean, Lord, mixed motives? Well, you know when the Bible says a double-minded double man what does it talk about? A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. That's what I think about when I think about mixed motives, where you may have good motives, but you may have bad motives. You know, the Bible talked about don't put new wine in old wineskins. What happens? You don't get the benefit of either one. You know what I mean? But today, God is going to unveil any, any motives that we may have. Because at the end of the day, this is about growth. This is about transformation. This is about awareness. Again, this is not going to be a condemning message. This is just about being made aware, man. So y'all remember pastors teaching on good works and dead works? Y'all remember that? What determines a good work? What determines a bad work? Your motive behind the work. Now, let's take a look at some dead works because of bad motives. Go with me to Matthew 6, 1 through 4 in the TPT. Matthew 6, 1 through 4 in the TPT. Examine your motives to make sure you're not showing off when you do your good deeds, only to be admired by others. Otherwise, you will lose the reward of your heavenly Father. Dang, you see that a lot in this world. So when you give to the poor, don't announce it and make a show of it just to be seen by people like the hypocrites in the streets and the marketplace they've already received their reward. But when you demonstrate generosity, do it with pure motives and without drawing attention to yourself. Verse 4, give secretly and your Father who will see all you do will reward you openly. And that's the thing about it, you know, when you do things out of your heart and it's pure, 
That's what God is looking at. God weighs the heart. But the good, we're going to learn in a minute that God is, he's, the wonderful thing I love about God, everything that we're teaching up here is the fact that God helps us with everything. We can totally depend on him with everything. When we got born again, it, it sets us free to understand that he helps us with everything. So we can come to him with motives and he'll develop us and bring us into pure motives. Amen. James 4, 3 in the NLT. James 4, 3 in the NLT. I'm excited. I want to get to a certain point. So I'm, I'm going to slow down. James 4, 3 in the NLT. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. Now, God told me, he said, let's, I don't want to stay on the bad motives too far. Let's talk about how to get the motives pure, amen? Now, if there are some of you that are saying, none of these are me, Terrell. I don't think I have secret motives. Go with me to Hebrews 4.12 in the TPT. <laughs> Go with me to Hebrews 4.12 in the TPT. For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouth sword. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being where our soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our heart. So my, my advice to you is, listen, if you don't feel like you have any secret motives, ask God. Double check with the Holy Spirit. Because it, it may be something that you're not aware of. And he may tap you on the shoulder and say, yeah, you got certain motives, secret motives in this and secret motives in that. So again, I'm not here to condemn, but it's to make you aware and say, you know what, Lord, let me double check with the Holy Spirit. Are there any type of secret motives that I may have? Because again, God will show you. He showed me some for myself, and I'm currently dependent on him to make those motives pure, amen? Now, let's learn. Do we have a pure heart once born again? and what operating with a pure heart practically looks like. Now, all of this is going to fit together. So I asked Jesus to give me his definition of a pure heart. I didn't go to Webster.com. I, I got it from Jesus.com, amen? <laughs> he said, this is, from, this is what he gave me. A pure heart is the heart of a believer who's established in grace and rooted in love. Now, first base I want to pay attention to. He said a believer. Is the believer believing? Is the believer believing? Pastor mentioned this in his sermon Easter Sunday, and then God spoke this same thing to me as I was studying like a week and a half ago. First, I want to ask you a question. How does a person believe? We're going to get practical and go, how does a person believe? Go to Romans 10.10 in the NLT. Romans 10.10 in the NLT. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. So we believe with our hearts. That's how we believe. Now, go with me to Acts 15.9 in the TPT. Acts 15.9 in the TPT. Check this out, y'all. So now, not one thing separates us as Jews and Gentiles. For when they believe, he makes their hearts pure. Y'all see this? When we believe, Jesus has promised to make our hearts pure. So you are sitting there right now. You are lying. If you are born again, you have a 100% pure heart right now. Check this out. Jesus said to me, the problem is we're not staying established long enough in what we believe. We will learn in a minute that grace is enough to take care of all of this. Amen? All right. So now that we've covered the first part of the pure heart, so are y'all agreeing with me? Do we have a pure heart? Doesn't it just read that we have a pure heart? Amen. So now that we've covered the first part of a pure heart, uh, which is the believer believing, and we know that they have a pure heart, it is very important for that believer to become established in what he or she believes. Now, 
Let's learn, this is very important, so if y'all have a pen, write this down. Let's learn the definition of established. Now, I did look up this up in dictionary.com and Merriam-Webster. So the definition of established is settled or installed permanently in a position. That's dictionary.com. Settled or installed permanently in a position. Now, the Merriam-Webster says successful for a long period of time and widely known. Is the gospel widely known? Are you, are you being successful in studying it for a long period of time? Are you settled in this gospel of grace? The last part, growing or flourishing successfully. Are you growing in your knowledge of the gospel? Are you growing in your understanding, amen? So, let's go to James 5.8. That ain't time to be flying with you up here. I got a lot to cover, but we may not finish it. James 5.8 in the AMC, AMPC. James 5.8 in the AMPC. So, also, must, you must be patient. I hear the Lord saying, we got to be patient with each other while, this is, while we're growing in this, amen? Be patient with each other. Establish your hearts. Strengthen and confirm them in the final certainty for the coming of the Lord is very near. How many know that the coming of the Lord is very near? Amen. Now, I got a question for you guys. It says establish your hearts. Establish our hearts in what? Establish our hearts in what? Go with me to 2 Peter 1.12. 2 Peter 1.12 in the King James. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Establish our hearts in the truth. What truth? What truth is it talking about? Go with me to Hebrews 13.9 in the AMPC and the TPT. Do not be carried away by different and varied and alien teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established, enabled, and strengthened by means of grace, God's favor, and spiritual blessing, and not to be devoted to foods, rules of diet, uh, ritualistic meals which bring no spiritual benefit or profit to those who observe them. There's too many law-based teachings out here. That's what it's comparing it to. But what is it saying? Be strengthened and established in this gospel of grace. I want you to read this in the TPT. Read this in the TPT. Check this out. <laughs> so don't let anyone lead you astray with all sorts of novel and exotic teachings. Check this out. It is more beautiful to feast on grace and be inwardly strengthened than to be obsessed with dietary rules which in themselves have no lasting benefit. Do y'all see this? It's telling us to feast on grace. What the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you Spend time with grace. Because when you spend time with grace, you spend time with Jesus. Jesus is asking you to come to his table and feast with him every day. So when we feast on grace, we're feasting on Jesus. Like the pastor says, when you get in the water, you're going to get wet. You're going to get wet with grace. And we're going to learn in a minute, when you get wet with grace, you're going to extend that same grace to everyone around you. Amen? So I want to ask you guys a question today. Are y'all ready to feast on grace? Will you become students of grace? Hey, y'all going to be students of grace? Y'all online, y'all ready to be students of grace? All right, amen, let's move on. Now, 2 Corinthians 1.12 in the AMPC in the TPT. I got to show y'all this in the Bible. I can't just sit up here teaching, you know, teaching you and it's not in the Bible. Amen? 2 Corinthians 1.12 in the AMPC and the TPT. First, we're going to read the AMPC. It is a reason for pride and uh, exalta exaltation to which our conscience testifies that we have, been, we have conducted ourselves in a world generally and especially toward you with devout and pure motives and godly sincerity, not in fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. Did y'all see that? Go back. I want to read that one more time. It is a reason for pride and 
exaltation to which our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in a world generally and especially toward you with devout and pure motives and godly sincerity. What is it telling you? Pure motives come not by fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God. Grace enables you to have pure motives. Y'all can't tell me y'all not getting this today, amen? Go with me to the TPT. This is getting me excited. What? Grace gives us pure motives? The TPT says, we rejoice in saying with complete honesty and clear conscience that God has empowered us to conduct ourselves in a holy manner with no hidden agenda. God's marvelous grace enables us to minister to everyone with pure motives, not in the clever wisdom of the world. This is especially true in all of our dealings with you. Wow. I love how the scripture ranks grace higher than the world's wisdom because most of the world's wisdom doesn't operate in pure motives, amen? So, establishing our hearts in grace is not a one-time event, but a continuous journey. It requires humility to acknowledge our need for grace and then simply receiving it. And when received, grace will permeate every aspect of our existence. So Terrell, how do we ensure our motives are being changed by grace? It begins with a humble examination of our motives with the Holy Spirit. Then, while grace is helping purify our motives, the believer continues to establish themselves in grace while at the same time be developing a root in the love of God. Amen? All right, so let's go to 1 Peter 1.22 in the Passion. 1 Peter 1.22 in the Passion. Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls, and this empowers you to be full of love for your fellow believers. So express this sincere love toward one another passionately with a pure heart. Now, one of the things I want y'all to pay attention to in this scripture is we understand what obedience is under grace. The, be the believer believes. So, obedience means believing. Obedience to what? Obedience to the gospel of grace. God promises to purify your souls. God promised you that we are full of love. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians 3, 11 through 13 in the AMPC. I know this is a lot of scriptures, y'all, but I, got, I, I know the Lord wants me to show you guys this because you got to get this in your souls, amen? Because we got to teach this to the next person. 1 Thessalonians 3, 11 through 13 in the AMPC. Now, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah guide our steps to you. Next verse. And may the Lord make you increase and excel and overflow in love. I, I prophesy that over your lives right now that the Lord, of, the Lord is increasing and excelling and overflowing you in love for one another so we can make a mark in this world that can never be erased. Amen? Amen. Lord, make you, oh my God, and may the Lord make you to increase and excel and overflow in love for one another and for all people, just as we also do for you, so that he may strengthen and confirm and establish your hearts faultlessly, pure, and unblameable in the holiness and the sight of our God and Father and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, with all his saints, the holy and glorified people of God. Amen. So be it. Oh, my God. God is increasing and overflowing in love with, for one of another. This is amazing that at the same time, do y'all see what's happening? At the same time, while God is filling us with love, he's establishing our hearts. Do y'all see how he's doing this? Amen? Okay. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 in the NLV. Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 in the NLV, NIV. I love this. I pray 
that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love is with Christ. You know what the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you guys? It is time for us to experience how deep, how wide, how long his love is for us. And the way that we do that is by establishing our hearts in grace, by establishing our hearts in his love. Think about what that will do to us when we experience this type of love. We'll learn, we're about to learn in a minute. When you experience this type of love, you're going to want to extend that to somebody else, even your enemies. Amen? Woo. Go with me to um, Psalms 112, 7 through 8 in the AMPC. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all see why this teaching is important? Y'all see what God wants to do in our lives? It's time for us to transform and grow in this. Because we're living in the world where people, they need to be loved. I just had, um, do you know, what, what is that, uh, the guys that come to your door, knock on your door, and they, what is that, what, what religion is that? Jo no, not the Jehovah Witness, the other ones. Um, not Seven Day Adventists. What was the, oh, I forgot the name. Not Mormons. What is the, um, they preach Jesus. They say it's another Bible. I don't know, I, I forget their name. But they, they, they came to me and they were pressuring me, pressuring me to, I'm like, I'm already saved. And they kept knocking at my door. They were coming and beating on my door. I'm like, I told you I'm saved. Well, we want to learn with you. We want to teach with you. I'm like, and I thought about it. Yep, Latter-day Saints, yeah. And, and I saw them the other night. And the Lord told me, he said, go to them and tell them that they can't preach with pressure. If it's not coming out of love, people are not going to receive it. That's why it's important for us to establish our hearts in this grace and establish our hearts in love. Because when we do that, it's going to overflow to people. If we're not operating in love, which people need, they're shutting it down quick. And that's why I told those brothers that. I said, I can understand your passion, but you're not going to be well received. Because I thought about if I wasn't saved, I would have been ready to shoot them, amen? <laughs> I'm glad I'm saved, amen? <laughs> okay, so where was I at? <laughs> oh, okay. Psalms 112, 7 through 8 in the AMPC. Psalms 112, 7 through 8 in the AMPC. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, for his heart is firmly fixed trusting, leaning on, and being confident in the Lord. Next verse. His heart is established and steady. He will not be afraid while he waits to see his desire established on his adversaries. God showed me something here. He said, think about it, your adversaries. When you think about adversaries, you're thinking about desires for them to be dealt with. Deal with them. But when your heart is established in love, God is saying that he's going to shape that desire, that the same thing that's happening to you, you're going to see that same desire for your adversaries. That's when you know that you're truly rooted in the love of God. When you want to see the same thing that's happening in your life happen to your adversaries. That's the place we got to get to, amen? All right, I got a couple more and then I'll be finished, y'all. Okay, so go with me to 1 Thessalonians 3.2 in the AMPC. 1 Thessalonians 3.2 in the AMPC. I love this. And when, and, and we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's servant in spreading the good news, the gospel of Christ. Check this out. The gospel of Christ to strengthen and establish and to exhort and comfort and encourage you in your faith. Is that it? Oh, 
No, that's it. Just to just go back real quick. One of the things I wanted to show you guys in this verse, that grace not only establishes and comforts you, but it encourages you in your faith. The, are y'all seeing this, why grace is so important to understand? Because we, a lot of times we may be looking at it like, what about my faith? What about my faith? Grace is covering every aspect of our lives. In my teaching before, we live by the faith of Christ. We have that faith on the inside of us. So when we get to understand grace, we're operating in his faith. Why? Because he's operating through us. See, when you get to understand grace, you understand that this grace life is about a total dependence on Jesus. Amen? Boy, you got to love this grace. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so this is the last scripture, and then we're going to close out. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 through 17 in the King James. Are y'all getting this? I know this is a lot of scriptures but y'all got to be seeing what I'm seeing. Make sure y'all go back and study this because it's very important to get this in you, amen? Because that's one of the things that God is trying to show us that we have to get established in this message of grace. We have to get established in it so it can, it can create a root that nobody can pull us up out of. And that was one of the things that he showed me is that most people, they don't take enough time and get established in this grace and get an understanding of it. Because once you get an understanding of it, it will change you. And we all know when you understand grace, you're empowered to change. And when you're empowered to change, you're empowered to change those around you. And it's a domino effect. When you're empowered to change those around you, they're empowered to change people around them. That's how this thing is going to work. That's how the gospel is going to be preached all over the world. It starts with us. Now, I'm not saying there's not other people that don't preach the gospel, but we know as world changers, this is the true gospel. Amen? Amen. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17 in the King James. I love this. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, hath given us the everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Through grace, through grace, comfort your hearts. Through grace, will establish you in every good work. Through grace, will establish you in every good work. Through grace, grace will establish all of your works. We're depending on grace to do everything through us. Because when we're depending on grace to do everything through us, we're depending on Jesus, because Jesus is grace. Amen? How many of y'all are thankful for grace? In closing, when our hearts are established in grace, we are empowered to extend grace to others. We become vessels of God's love and mercy, offering compassion to the broken and acceptance to the marginalized. In doing so, we participate in God's redemptive work in the world and bear witness to the transform transformative power of grace. So let us therefore commit ourselves to cultivating pure hearts that's established in grace. Let us immerse ourselves in the depths of God's love, allowing it to shape our thoughts, words, and actions. And let us extend grace generously to all, embodying the message of hope and reconciliation that lies at the heart of the gospel of grace. Amen? Come on, y'all, let's give God some praise for that message. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for that word. Father, I pray that that word penetrates to your people. I thank you that you're still ministering to them, giving them a rhema word on what it is that you want them to hear. Because each person, you know, you know what each person is experiencing. You're omnipresent and you're aware 
of everything everybody's going through. So I thank you, Father, that you've uncovered and made people aware of motives, and your grace is helping them with them. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. We thank you, Father, that you're going to continue to help us immerse ourselves in your grace. You're going to help us to immerse ourselves in your love. We're just so grateful, Father, that this life of grace means that we're totally dependent on you. So, Father, we give you praise, and we're in expectation for this gospel of grace to go out all of the world through your people. And we give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all, let's give God some praise. So at this time, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's first base. As a believer, it's about accepting what Christ has done, because he's already done everything you will ever need. So all you have to do is say, you know what? I received that. And then what happens is the Holy Spirit will move on the inside of you and dwell with you for eternity. Who wouldn't want that? The Holy Spirit moving on the inside of you for eternity? That is a blessing. And the great thing about it is he wants to move on the inside of you. He wants to do that. So it's up to you to say, you know what? I'm ready to receive, and I'm telling you, when you do that, the life of Christ will come into your life and change your life. So if you want to be born again, say this simple prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. Right now, I repent for my sins. Today, I receive salvation. Today, I receive forgiveness. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died for me. And today, I receive your spirit. And today, I receive that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, y'all, let's give it up for those who got saved. Praise God. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with me today, text the keyword I'm saved as one word to 51555. Provide your name and an email address, and we will send you a free ebook as a gift to you today. And our advice is get to know Jesus. Amen. All right. Y'all know what time it is. It's gracious giving time. Come on, y'all. Praise God. <clears throat> And you know how we do in this church. We don't put no pressure on you to give. It comes out of your heart. It comes out of your heart. God has already spoken to you what to give. So if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. But I want you to think about that. What does God put in your heart to give? When you give, it's showing God that you appreciate all that he's done for you. And it's your worship to him. It's a way that you complete your worship. So that's an amazing opportunity for you to say, God, I worship you with this gift, and I'm giving it to you and thankful for what you've done for me. So this is your opportunity to have a personal time with God where you worship him with your gifts and you say, I'm thankful for what you've done for me. Amen? Now, the ways to give that are on for you online are on the screen. You can text World Changer Space in the amount to 74483. You can call one 866 477-7683, or you can mail it in to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia, 30349. And if you want to give via PayPal, you can do so at worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org. And if you want to give via uh, the QR code, you simply scan the QR code with your phone. It'll send you a link. You click on that link and you can give that way. Amen? All right, y'all, let's pray over, pray over our gifts. You can hold them up. Father, this is our seed. We worship you with this seed. We're so grateful, Father, that you've given us seed to sow. You take care of us, Father. This is our way of saying we're grateful and we're thankful for all that you do and all that you've done. So we sow this seed in faith, and we thank you that you've promised to multiply it, and we tell it to grow and grow. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Ushers, you may receive the offering at this time. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and stand so we can dismiss. Did y'all get something out of that? Yeah. Okay. Right. One thing I learned, you know, you got to just do what God tell you to do. So, you know, I, I know he told me to preach that, and I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful that, you know, sometimes when you preach a lot of scriptures and stuff. I don't want y'all to get bored out of it, but it's the word and it's what God told me to do. So I'm doing what he told me to, but it makes a mark in your life that can never be erased. Amen. Yep. Lift your hands with me. I declare the best of wealth, the best of health to overtake you and your family's lives. I declare the blessing of the Lord is making you rich and adding no sorrow with it. I declare that peace surrounds you. I declare that the angels have charge over you, that you have divine protection over your lives. I plead the blood of Jesus over your lives and your family lives. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless for the exceeding joy to our only wise God and Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever in Jesus' name. Y'all are dismissed. Have a good one. Are you ready to come home? Grace Life Conference 2024, the reunion is coming. Creflo and Taffy Dollar will be joined by special guests Andrea Creighton, Gregory Dickow, Bishop Clarence McClendon, Inky Johnson, Michael Smith, Hezekiah Walker, and Brian Courtney Wilson, July 11th through 13th. Don't miss this experience that includes our annual mentality and ministers and leaders conferences. Text Grace Life to 51555. Yeah.